So now let's do the scabbard. And let's go ahead and do that. So once again, this hilt or the scabbard will be gold. And I am going to be using a lemon yellow as the base. And I'm also going to be making these edges gold as well. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm just going to be calling the edges here. Then I'm going to take a, whoops, I'm going to take a yellow ochre. Where's my yellow ochre? Here. I'm just going to be recoloring in these areas and marking out my shadows. Anywhere that has a little bit of an edge, you know, you want to mark that down. Then I'm going to be taking a burnt ochre, and then I'm going to be putting in the shadows officially. And finally, we are going to be using a dark umber and just adding in final touches of darkness. And for the gemstone, which will be pretty nice, uh, I'm going to use a light aqua. I'm going to color in the center. Then I'm going to take a aquamarine. I'm going to be coloring in the sides, a little bit of the bottom. And for an even darker, whoops, for an even darker hue or color, I'm going to be using a peacock blue for the darkness. And then once again, I'm going to use my what gel pen and use that as a highlight. There. So I always like to use my white gel pen very, very sparingly. I only want to use it for highlights that I feel like absolutely need it. So I'm not going to be putting it every single place, you know. I'm just going to be putting it in some areas. So for the scabbard here, I'm debating if I should just make it red. Um, I think I will end up doing that. Uh, but let me think here. I was initially intending for the cape to be red. But then it will blend in with this thing here, which I guess should be fine. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'll just make it red. I'll make it dark red. So I'm going to use a magenta for this as a block-in color, just because I want it to be a little bit darker this time. So I'm not going to, you know, use a pale vermilion this time. So when I want things to have a dark base, when I want things to be inherently dark, I'm going to use a dark base for it. Then I'm going to be adding a carmin carmine red. I'm just going to be filling in the little gaps with this. To give it a dark color, I'm going to be using my crimson red. Or my, yeah, crimson like red. I feel like in oil paint, you would call this alizarin crimson, which is actually really, really such a really cool name. Actually, it would be a really cool name for a character, too. I feel like I'm going to name this character. I feel like he's, his name's going to be Adrian or something, because it kind of fits. And now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a dark purple for our really, really dark darks. So areas like... You know, around the edges, underneath the palm here. As it reaches through the cape. 
kind of blend it by coloring over softly. There. So that will be his scabbard. So let's see what this looks like. Ooh, that's looking pretty nice. Whoops, it's almost like a little velvet hero. All right, so I'm gonna add a little bit of white gel pen just to kind of clear up areas like the um, like the uh, little details of the gold. So I'm just gonna indicate some of these details here, and that should be good enough. All right, so there is his little uh, sword, and now let's go ahead and just work on the bottom here. So I kind of imagined the bottom part would actually be just dark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a dark umber and just color this in. So similar color to the fur. Just block it in really roughly. Use the side of the pencil, not the tip. And once that's done, we can go ahead and add a darker dark, which would be a, oops, which would be a dark brown. Let's see how that looks. Actually, no, not a dark brown, a gray. Let's add it around the creases. Underneath all these objects in front of it. And then let's of course add a little bit of our pen here just to, just to give it some nice dark color. So I'm going to outline this more intensely. I'm going to do that and this. Add a little bit of dark spot for the pants like a little mass or a shadow just to kind of emphasize that this is a different material or just kind of like a, just a dark material. I feel like you can even add some hatching to that but I think that should be good enough. So this is what it looks like so far. You know he's looking really really good. He's looking pretty nice and manly now. And now let's go ahead and work on our legs. And our legs would just be the same process. You know, add in our white base. Whoops. And as you get to the ends, just be, be a little bit careful not to try and bend your paper, not to uh, bend your paper accidentally. So I would say use continuous strokes and don't and just go light with it. So I'm going to make this extra white here. Same with these edges. And I'm going to use a gold or a really, really bright yellow. I'm just going to be painting in these edges, not painting, coloring. Now I'm going to be using a burnt, uh, burnt ochre and just adding my darkness here around the edges, kind of like a little cylinder. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 50%, where is it, my 50% gray, I feel like it's here somewhere. <laughs> Oh, that's not it. Oh, here it is. Take my 50% once again and shade in areas of, that are not completely drawn in white. Of course, add a little bit of shadow along these edges. And then finally, add in your 70% around the edges here. That's the wrong one. 
just around these edges here and a little bit around where the highlights are. As well as where the ridges are here. So just to kind of give it some nice body. And there we have the legs. So his whole potty is done. All is left, all that's needed is the crown and his cape. And his cape is going to be red. So let's do the cape. And I'm going to be starting off with a pale vermilion. So once again, I'm going to just sharpen this real quick. And now I'm going to be coloring everything with this vermilion. In fact, this kind of bold color kind of makes the silver pop as well. So I'm also repeating some colors. So like, for instance, you know, his main colors are um, white and gold for his armor. However, his subcolor would be red because there's like some reds that are like kind of popping out on areas that are important. So take your time on coloring this as a base. So definitely in comparison with Crayola, this is a lot smoother to work with on this paper. And it's also a lot higher quality of colors. So you definitely get to see the difference between the two mediums. You know, so it's up to you which one you want to choose. If you want to choose the more cheap route or the more expensive route, it depends on how far you want to take art, you know. If you want to take it as like a little bit of a hobby, you know, or just more of like a passion, you know. If you want it as a passion, you know, get some more expensive materials, you know, make your art look nice. If you're doing it as a hobby, you know, go for something a little bit cheaper, a little bit more budget friendly. And try not to bend your paper when doing this. And sharpen often. So we have all of this done. I'm going to sharpen once again. And then do the same thing on the other side. a little bit easier because it's all in one motion. So because I'm using the side of pencil, it takes a lot fast, it makes it a lot faster for me to color everything. Alright, so now once we have all this blocked in, we can go ahead and add some darker darks. And I want this, you know, this to be quite bright of a red. So I'm going to be using more brighter reds. So I'm taking my sharpened carmine red now. Carmine red. And just filling in everything else with this color. So I'm going to try to move all these pencils out of the way because it's starting to get in the way of my workspace here. All right. Now let's color everything again. I usually like to color in areas of the shadows. You know, some, such, for instance, areas at the back usually would be in shadow, and areas towards the front would have a little bit more highlights in front of it. So I like to mark out... Uh, I like to mark out... Um, Mark out shadows at this stage. So, for instance, I'm using the car, this carmine red, and just kind of painting in the folds here. So, always think about forms. Never let that escape out of your mind. <sighs> this is all in the way. <laughs> I should have put them back where I should have. Oh well, I'm not really all that clean when it comes to working traditionally. I always like to put everything everywhere and never clean up. Oh well, I'm sure that there are you guys like me out there too, of course. I mean, who doesn't clean up sometimes? Alright, once I have all these, all this area all done, I'm going to take a more passionate red. So for instance, a, let me think, 
What's a good red here to use? I'm going to check in my arsenal here. So I'm going to check in here. This is my third. Oh, this is nice. So I'm going to be using a puppy red. That's actually super cute for our main color. So now I'm going to be coloring in this whole thing with this poppy red and look how nice and orange that looks. I think that's perfect for that vibrant red. So I'm going to put up more pressure on this one now. because I want this red to pop out really, really nice. Same thing for the back. Just press in that red. And just smooth out the grains in the paper. Now let's add a darker red. So let's add our, um, our Crimson Lake red, and let's add in our shadows now. So we had all of our main reds in, now let's add in our shadows. Shadows along these folds here. We could even do is even, you know, put a, sneak in a little bit of red on the armor because it kind of like has a bit of reflective light. You don't have to do that though, although that would be a little bit more realistic. So I like adding this red around the corners here, where sort of around the back, like so. And then finally, areas like here, we need a little bit of this red as well. Last but not least, this area here will need some shadow. So areas that are kind of getting rounded off will look good with this red. There. So now the cape is all done. And finally, we have our crown, which are, is our final looking, which, are, which is our final piece here. So let me go ahead and zoom out a little bit. Oh, this is getting a little bit bright. There. So now let's go ahead and color in his crown, which will be once again a gold. So I'm going to be coloring in with a lemon yellow. I'm going to use a yellow ochre. And of course, painting in the little details, you know, areas of shadows around the little details here. Then Sienna Brown, adding bits of brown to our mix to give it that nice golden color or that golden aspect. Of course, if you want to make it a little bit streaky with the metallic texture, go ahead and do that. And then finally, let's have our dark, darkest dark, and this will be, you know, around the outlines, you know, further just adding more detail, you know, emphasizing details here. You know, if I want to make this piece pop out, I'm just going to add little dark, dark bits around. And for the gemstones, again, it's going to be the same. I'm going to use a aqua or a light aqua. I'm going to color this in, color that in, and here. Then I am going to be using a peacock blue, coloring in the ends or the sides of the diamonds. And then finally, we have our little white gel pen. There. If 
you want to add a little bit of highlight around the crown as well that would actually be really really nice because it emphasizes close to the face but I wouldn't add too much just enough that's good all right so that is pretty much it for this illustration let me know what you guys think this was all done in prismacolor and on toned paper hopefully that this was helpful for you guys and that you learned a lot anyways I'll see you guys in the next one bye bye